Be careful with the kind of things that happen around your home. Be careful mm -hmm. with the kind of things you say in front of your kid. Okay, because kids are kids. They will go to school and they will just talk. And at times they can go to school and then they will, they will be discussing with their fellow pair or even with their teacher and be like, ah, do you know that my daddy beat my mom yesterday? Ah, ah, ah. That alone has caused things. So you just have to like literally be very, very careful with the kind of things that happen around them. If mm. not, ah, wahala. <laughs> we'll just come and meet you on top of your head. <laughs> everybody welcome back to the channel it's amazing having you here again on today's video we are going to be talking about raising kids in the uk for immigrants and people who have just relocated to the uk you would want to watch this video so that you would know all of the information on how raising kids in the uk is done so today i have someone who is going to tell us all about this because you know me i do not have kids yet so i do not have this experience to share but she has kids and she will tell us everything we need to know so i'll let her do the introduction and we can continue from there if you are just seeing my face for the first time let me introduce myself to you my name is mercy I am a nurse. I am currently practicing in the UK and on this channel we talk about nursing, lifestyle, updates in the UK, travel, vlogs and I hope you find this valuable to stick around and subscribe. And for my returning subscribers and say thank you very much for coming back. God bless you. Alrighty, over to you lovely lady. Can you please introduce yourself? Hello, hello beautiful people. My name is Ada. And I am happy to be here uh, on Messi's channel today. That's literally in your midst. Thank you for having me. So, uh, like I said, my name is Ada. I am a Nigerian. I have been resident in the UK for nearly five years. I am a nurse, a mom, and a YouTuber as well. So, that's it. I'm going to leave the link to her channel as well. So, use comparisons through her channel too. Okay, okay, okay. So... A mom, how many kids have you got? I've got three at the minute, hopefully, <laughs> just <At> three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for people who just relocated to the UK and they give birth to a child in the UK, do the child automatically become a citizen? No, well, depends on the parents' uh, status in the UK. If the child is born to a parent of, uh, if the child is born to a parent who has a settled status, that is, you have a definite leave to remain, then the child can actually apply for naturalization after that. But if the parent is still on a visa, maybe a tier two, a student visa, whatever, the child does not automatically become anything. You're just, you're just still dependent. Oh, <laughs> That's okay. it for you. I see. So now we're heading towards the cold time of the year, towards winter, and people who are coming in September batch to study or even to work as well. How would they prepare that child, say, for this cold weather, especially if they've never experienced it before? How do they layer the kids, basically? Well, uh, from September to whenever we find ourselves in another set of summer, even if we hardly have that here in the UK, it's mm -hmm. a very hard time for immigrants and especially for the kids. Uh, if you check, uh, that's the time when half of the kids are sick, half of the kids are off school because they've got a cold, they've got a flu, they've got everything. But what can you do? That's the country, that's their weather. So what you can do as an immigrant mom, of course, is to, it's kind of expensive, but you try as much as possible to have your heat on. It's not just about layering your kid. Even if you if you layer them up too much, then they come down with rashes, they come down with uh, other skin things. Of course, their skin does need air. But what you can actually do is ensure that the environment where they are is warm. Mm. And that's just by having your heat turned on most of the time. Uh, I know it's expensive, but yeah, you know, you're going to have to compare between uh, the cost you spend doing that and spending loads of nights in A&E. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when the child eventually falls sick so usually what i'll do is 
try to have the heat turned on as much as possible and most especially have the heat turned on just before they go to bed or let's say from five o'clock even if i turn it off let's say by 11 but then the house is warm enough to carry them till very late into the night or even the next morning and uh something else i've always practiced that have actually helped me is um aside from the central heating in the house i would always have like this little uh little heaters <laughs> Yeah, those little ones. Yeah, I usually have them in every single room. So, uh, whenever it's very cold in the middle of the night, maybe I stood up to use the toilet or so, I could just sneak into the kids' room and just turn it on, and then it warms mm -hmm. up. Let's say uh, the one you had on earlier one has has went out. You just put in that one and it heats up the room again for them. So that's it. Uh, the winter jacket you can use it outside and everything, but you can't have the kids wearing winter jacket running around in the house. You know, you can only make the environment warm enough for them to, you know, just make it conducive. That's literally what you can do. Sure. And you know, back in Nigeria, um, people mm -hmm. usually hire helps, the house helps to help them take care of the babies and things like that is it the same way over here in the uk <laughs> well uh the uk doesn't practice any form of uh well they don't practice any form of uh slavery or okay. adults or child labor because what you're saying that uh, it's more like child labor where you have a house help that comes and takes care of your child and things like that what they would have it's nannies Okay. okay now these nannies of course you have to be uh you have to be an adult to be a nanny you may have somebody who babysits for you but not necessarily that you're paying this person if the person is not yet an adult okay but for you to have like a full uh person you can call a nanny a staff a worker this person definitely has to be an adult of course and then you're gonna pay from your nose girl i tell you you're gonna pay from your nose so very few immigrants will want to practice that because they mm -hmm. cost a fortune their hourly rates might be as much as uh what you what you get as a nurse frankly no joke and uh my friend who uses them very now and again, you know, just at times there are days when she pay a hundred and twenty pound. But one day a certain time, yeah, because she's got two kids, a hundred and twenty pound. So yeah. let's say you're working for four days in a week and you're paying a hundred and twenty pounds per day. So see how much you're spending in the week. That's over six hundred pounds, isn't it? So okay. how much did you earn in that week that you spend six hundred pounds for a nanny? <laughs> So it's very, very deep. You find very little persons able to afford that service. So usually what you would do is try to work your time table against that of your spouse. Mm. So both of you just have to sort your child care together among yourself. Except you are, well, you know, you've got a large pocket, can actually afford <laughs> paying a nanny. Then you mm. can go ahead and do that. But you don't have, you know, like the house set that you say is just living between your house and you're, you're not paying, but it's just, you know, you don't have such luxury because i'll call that luxury here in the uk you don't have such hair hmm. okay so what is the british education system like and how does it compare with the nigerian system say schooling for example how does it compare with the nigerian system well uh of course the practice the british curriculum which uh it's actually okay but you see at the time when my kids came I felt like it was less than what we had in Nigeria. I'm very sure that a lot of parents will agree with me on this because mm -hmm. at the time my son was five years old whenever he came to the UK and at five, he was able to read like huge vocabularies. He was able to pronounce very like serious words and read mm -hmm. serious books. But whenever he started school, yeah, I think that was P5. No, that was either P2 or P1. I can't necessarily, I can't remember clearly, but People in his class weren't at that level yet. People in his class were still coloring and doing ABC. And yeah, he was reading vocabularies. And so uh, he, he was actually nurtured in that, in that level. He came in because at some point the teacher even told me, oh, I think I'm most of it. he's reading too much vocabularies as he's supposed to be. Uh, getting at this age so i feel that most of the things are just stress learning and i feel that he has crammed too much so uh in this place we don't cram we try to build them to learn and what 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 so but eventually what happened is uh he wasn't he wasn't he didn't continue at the pace he was in nigeria you see our nigerian education i find it to be quite intense okay mm -hmm. so the kids learn very fast 
Mm. And then even if it's crime work or it's not crime work, but then they learn very fast. You hardly have a six year old in Nigeria that is not already reading very well. Mm. But here in the UK, at seven, eight, a child is still not reading, and it's okay. Yes, at seven, eight is not reading because my other son, who is uh, over six, he's now learning to read. He's now he's beginning to learn, and you know the three letter words and all those things. Meanwhile, this other one at five was already reading like huge books, and then, so you can see that disparity. Mm. But uh, so at the onset, I was a bit uh, perturbed about it. I was like, how, why? This is not just making sense. I'll tell you, I went as much as getting a private teacher for my son from Nigeria. <laughs> yes, I did. So uh, he was able to learn online via Zoom. But at some point, I'm like, what, of what use would this knowledge be if he's only going to be tested based on what he's been taught in the but, class? Yeah. So I had to stop that. And then he went ahead just to learn with his uh, peers. But mm. eventually, what I find out at this stage in his life is that he's not actually lacking behind with his peers in, in Nigeria. So you see, I think they just have a different method of teaching, of teaching. which mm. might be different from what we're used to. And we might find mm -hmm. it a little bit strange at the start but eventually give the child time and the child will eventually level up and just be at the exact stage where he's supposed to be oh. that's that's just where we are okay so from i know some, some people might not really like this next question and i'm really sorry but i need mm -hmm. to ask it <laughs> for your kids have they ever experienced any form of racism just because they're blacks and things like that? Because I know there are a lot of kids that go to school and because they are black, they are being separated from their other pairs or things of that nature. Yes, I know of one or two that has happened before. So has it ever oh. happened to yours or what kind of advice would you give for people in such a situation? Well, that would be very sad uh, for a child to experience uh, something as drastic as that because that could actually leave like an indenting uh, yeah. memory on the child. Mm -hmm. Well, I stay in Northern Ireland and I know you can't, uh, you can't clearly say that there is no form of racism in any part of the world because you know, you know, but then Northern Ireland wouldn't like you really see like open racism in every part. They are very, very careful about mm. that uh so the teachers would never want to make a comment that suggests that your child is different in terms of color in terms of race in terms of appearance for mm. any reason and you know of course children will always be children a yeah. child might be wondering in your class a child has never seen uh, somebody from africa before might be wondering oh why is your own hair different from mine you know and um, why is your own hair not orange <laughs> 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 why is your hair not orange why is your hair a different color from my own color but i wouldn't necessarily call that racism because these are kids who are just naturally inquisitive yeah okay they want to know so that i wouldn't refer to as racism because such comments of course my kids who are uh, they've, they've had such comments and i don't really see that as racism i'll just uh uh there are times they are the ones who also ask you know they're like oh mommy this i have a friend who has a very orange hair is that it's very, you know <laughs> That's also them, you yeah. understand? So these are kids mm -hmm. wanting to be inquisitive, but then not necessarily anybody pointing out to say, oh, you're, you're different, so you're less of a human being, or things like that, no, no, no. Maybe because they are still just, they are still young at the primary level, they haven't necessarily yeah. gone to the, uh, you know, the adolescent when people become silly and things like that. But right now, no, we haven't had such experience and we hope not to have such experience. But then you still need to, of course, uh, try to have like this open conversation with your kids. Okay, you need to find out what's going on in their life because you see mm -hmm. things like that, they could actually be very, very drastic. They mm -hmm. can cause a lot of harm the life of the kids because already these kids at times the very first school my kids attended they were the only african kids in the entire school wow. you know here in northern ireland we don't have as much africans as we would have yeah. in england yeah. so uh they were the only african kids in the entire school like from the nursery to the highest class in the primary so of course it was strange for every other child mm -hmm. in that school so it's not easy you know being in that situation and then adding it with somebody now making silly comments or the teacher not treating them fairly you just have to be open with your child ask yeah. them like have a conversation mm -hmm. about these things with your child and see what they say they might not not actually tell you that look at what somebody said to me but they could suggest something and say oh my teacher does this at times or my classmate does this and my teacher doesn't say anything then you can actually know you just you have to be you have to be like in that gap 
between your your kids and the outside world because if you're not nobody else is gonna help them do it. it's just you true true okay so um there is social service in the uk and how you are supposed to be raising your kids basically mm. and cleaning your kids so what would you say about social services and them coming to take kids away from parents and basically what people need to be informed about regarding that well uh first i will want to put a disclaimer out there that i am not a social worker True. so i might not be uh i might not be an expert in this field i might not be in the best place to give the advice but from my experience as a mom in the country and from cases and things i have heard and seen you can see that uh the way kids are reared here or the way kids are brought up here are very very different from the way we were brought up Africa. of course every region has their cultures their norms you know and the way they practice things and so when you eventually leave where you are and they move into a different place in as much as um you still want to hold on to your cultures and norms and values you're also going to want to adapt a little bit into the norms acceptable principles of the place where you found yourself that's mm -hmm. you have to be aware of because that's where we begin to have the issues right mm -hmm. now back home in africa a child will do something wrong and then you discipline the child it's not a crime where we <laughs> from. it's not a crime i was disciplined multiple times it didn't kill me it didn't harm me it only made me a better person right mm -hmm. so uh you find yourself now in a place where they've made it clear and open to you that we do not want you discipline your disciplining your child in that manner okay now mm -hmm. i know this is your child and you have the right to say oh this is my child i'm going to do what i like and things like that but then if you're going to do what you like what do you do you should carry your bag and go to a place that permits you to do what you like that. yes. that's how i see it okay so you can't be in a place right these people that have their law they say don't do this for us here and then you do it then you're breaking the mm -hmm. law that is it so once you are aware that this is what it is you can now begin to reform you begin to untrain yourself because whenever i came down here i had to like un untrain myself from certain things i know mm -hmm. oh you're not allowed to do this you're not allowed to do this at the start you'll be thinking oh it's not possible for you to raise these children without disciplining them you know with spank and stuff like that but eventually you realize you can actually raise your kids without spanking them you can actually raise your kids without you know doing such means there are other means of disciplining your child the other means of uh, letting the child know that he's done something wrong and getting him to feel remorseful without necessarily hitting the child. So yeah. people get into trouble because of that. That's one of the major ones. Then another thing that uh, gets most immigrants into trouble with the social service and social welfare and stuff like that is leaving the child unattended. Oh. That's like, these are the two major things, either disciplining or leaving the child unattended. Now mm -hmm. I understand the struggle of being an immigrant like it's really really tough because let's say you're a student you're dealing with school you're dealing with work you're dealing with paying bills and now you have kids as well or even if you're, you're a worker you're dealing with all these things you don't have any support from the government we know it's only whatever you and your spouse work that you can use to manage so at times it's hard getting that um you can't afford a nanny of course you can't afford mm -hmm. somebody in between to be there while you go to work or while your spouse comes back from work so there's always that bridge in how to manage the kids and mm -hmm. at times you end up leaving the kids unattended to go to to them just to buy something outside you know we'll do this back home in africa it's not a big deal the kids will be safe and fine but in here in here they find that to be a crime i think the only age where a child can be left unattended it's like from either 17 or 16 i'm not too sure yes. if I don't put me on this but it's either 16 or 17. yeah so any child less than that cannot be left unattended overnight uh mm -hmm. then uh with 14 or so cannot be left unattended uh during the day so if you find yourself in a situation where you're to leave these kids unattended and somebody decides to uh be very smart and call the social service on you mm -hmm. and things like that then you find yourself in a deep shit trying to you know defend yourself and give you reasons why it happened you really don't want to be in that situation or in that scenario it's tough my dear it's tough it's, it's a situation you don't want to be. I've had a couple of persons who found themselves in, in that situation. I'm telling you, question why you even left your home and came down here. 
<laughs> so these are certain things like you look out for number one discipline number two leaving your child unattended number three be careful with the kind of things that happen around your home be careful mm -hmm. with the kind of things you say in front of your kid okay because kids are kids they will go to school and they'll just talk and at times they can go to school and then they'll they be discussing with their fellow pair or even with their teacher and be like ah do you know that my daddy beat my mom yesterday ah that alone has caused things so you just have to like literally be very very careful the kind of things that happen around them if mm. not ah wahala <laughs> we'll just come and beat you on top of your head <laughs> so these are little things you just have to be very very careful you don't want to uh you just have to be extremely careful true so with the parenting style in the uk that is totally different from africa what kind of support do Nigerians and immigrants have? Is there any available to face these challenges with raising kids in the UK? Have you got any idea if, the, if there are like supports available for immigrants coming into the UK to be able to adapt to this parenting style or to be able to raise up their kids properly different from how it is in Nigeria and Africa? Well, uh, here there isn't any established parenting support group. Mm -hmm. There isn't any established one, but you could actually form like a community wherever yeah. you find yourself. You know, nobody's an island. You could find people from uh, same geographical areas to where you're coming from, and you could have like a community, and both of you just use can decide to help each other because that's the only way forward. Mm -hmm. Like where I live here in Belfast, I do have a couple of ladies as well who are from Nigeria who've got kids, and some of them, the kids also go to the same school with my kids. So you oh, see, okay. I think it makes life very easier because if I'm running late, I'm at the shop, I can always call somebody and say, oh, could you pick the kids up for me? And I'll pick them out from your house. You know, having such support helps make the body much uh, less. But then, if you find yourself in a place where you've no support like that, it's really, really hard. There is no established support. So even if you don't have neighbors like that, you could actually form one for yourself. You can have, uh, you can make friends in the church. If you're somebody who goes to the church, you can like check on your co-workers. You can, you should actually make like an intentional effort to get support. Make an intentional effort to get support. It's not like you're being lazy and trying to force yourself on anybody, but try, try. Look for people who have similar situations like you, having similar, having similar experience with you. They will be there to be able to support you because both of you are likely going through uh, the same thing, and I think that will help along. Like it will help a lot. Okay, so that's the end of the video. One last question: What advice? what encouragement what tips would you give for upcoming mothers like me you know and for people <laughs> <laughs> and for people who are coming into the uk as immigrants but with kids as well what would you advise us because i need to well uh, it's not learn. it's not it's not as difficult as you might think well it's hard it's tough definitely it's hard but yeah you're gonna be fine it might be a little bit tough at the start but eventually you get used to it Mm -hmm. You get used to having to put the kids ahead of every other plan. You get used to putting the kids ahead of your work, you, ahead of your social life, ahead of every other thing. Like the kids literally come first in this country. So if you do not place the kids first, you're going to be in trouble. So whatever you're doing, before you decide to have a, a child in this country, make sure you've adjusted yourself and say, yes, I will be able to cater for this child. I'll be able to be there for this child. I'll be able to foot all these bills for this child. But if you don't think you can, maybe you should just hold on because if you don't, the government will come for you. <laughs> the government will come for you. That's their law. That's like that's their value. So you can't help it. Kids are like an an asset in this country, and the government like look at them specifically. They don't want to uh, see you uh, not meet up your responsibilities as regards your kids. So you have to be very careful. If you don't think you can cope with them, let's say you're coming here as a student, please leave them back home. Hmm? Leave them back home. Come here. It's not uh, worth. It's not worth the trauma uh, stress to put yourself through. Leave them back home and come. When you're set, you can get them. Don't be in a hurry to pack them and come. And then all of you are looking for accommodation. You are going through one stress or another. You're putting these children through a lot of trauma. You see, uh, the government is not very happy about situations like that. Okay, so that's just it. But last, last, we're we'll alright. <laughs> What do we have? It's only God we have. We go do our right now. It's only God that is ahead. <laughs> so we'll be fine. Yeah.
Oh, that's good. Thank you so much, Ada. It was lovely having you on the channel. All right. To bring you to come and give us more content on this channel. You know, you see that plan, that also plan. <laughs> we'll come back and talk more on you. All right. But for now, let's bring this video to an end and say thank you very much. We are very grateful. This is me saying thank you on behalf of everybody that will watch this video. Thank you. And thank you I for hope having you. me. And please go and subscribe to my channel. Please, please, please subscribe. <laughs> subscribe right. to our channel, you know. That's the only way we grow. And we do more content for you guys. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.